Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Medium Kim. Thank you for joining uh, for these few moments. I, it's wonderful to be with you as we spend a little time together and hopefully upliftment around these difficult times. So um, just letting you know, I have a little announcements first, then we are going to talk about meditation. Does it work? Energy healing? Does it work? And message from Mary. Uh, and I have some hospice insights uh, from the weekend I worked on Saturday. And I'll share that with you if you're interested. Um, okay, so start with the announcements. Okay, everybody. Uh, again, thank you for being here. Thank you to the new subscribers. I have a few, few more this week. And um, I want to thank you, Susan Lynn, who we were on last week together. It was wonderful to share time with her. Um, and there was a lot of positive comments. So I wonder what I want to say about that is this community is such a loving, supportive community. I have never had really, I, I think in all the whole year that I've been on, um, maybe I've had one negative. I haven't. So, so I just feel very blessed and supportive. When I go out into the other world, um, it feels different. And I'll talk about that. Oh, well, I'll just say it now. Uh, when I work as hosp in hospice, it's hard to go from this community where we can talk about spirits, guides, um, you know, mediumship, our, you know, clairsentient, aliens, whatever it is we want to talk about. And, but when we go into the other world, I have to bite my tongue a little bit, despite the fact that when I sit at the bedside with somebody, it's so clear to me who's there, this, the, the, the feeling of the departed loved ones or the angels or both near the person who's transitioning is so strong and it's in, um, I have to be very careful about what I say. So it, it, it is hard. And I'm hoping in the future, not too far away, I hope within 10 years, we can all be very open about it. Um, because remember, oh gosh, how long was it when yoga was kind of weird and now it's normal? That reminds me, and I'm, I'm digressing already, but I went to yoga class Sunday morning. I'm getting out. We're getting out. Boy, the world is opening up again. Yeehaw, right? Uh, so I haven't been out. I haven't been to yoga class in a couple of years. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to wear. Are, is everybody going to be 20 years old? Um, and my my yoga mat has been chewed by my dog. I mean, it's pretty much doesn't just is all I need to get a new one. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, I got there and I wasn't the only one that felt awkward. <laughs> So it was great. The uh, one man that was there, his mat looked a little different to me, just like my mat looked a little chewed. His mat looked different. And he professed that his mat was actually his dog's sleeping mat. <laughs> so I'm not the only one come in with feeling a little awkward. So just know as we as we go out into the world again, we may have these experiences. But I want to let you know a couple of things happening up ahead. Um this third, no, tomorrow at Ron, with Ron, I'm going to be at Ron, with Ron, Unconditional Love on his channel. We're going to be doing live readings and healings, and that's at 5.30 Central, 6.30 East, Eastern, and that would be uh, 3.30 Pacific time on his channel. And then Thursday, I'm going to have Kelly Brickle come on. She is a psychic medium. She hosts the Psychic Hour, it's a radio talk show, and she's really good at numerology. So, and she's offered to give a few readings, numerology readings, so you wanna join us for that. She's really a wonderful, uh, wonderful, gentle soul. I, I love her energy, and that will be Thursday at 1.30 Central. All right, and then I know there's something else. Oh yeah, Saturday, um, I, I'm now you guys are all invited to join an animal healing workshop. It's for two Saturday, two hours on two Saturdays coming up the 26th and April 9th. So uh, I will have a link for that if you want to join us for that. And there's no experience necessary. Just you want to have uh, maybe and want the desire to learn a very simple animal healing technique. And when I've done this before, it's been magical. All right, so I guess I will start with, does meditation work? Uh, with last week, when we had our group meditation, um, 
and it was, you know, we and we worked on contemplative prayer. And it is, I believe, a, a really easy meditation type to learn for yourself. Uh, you can look it up on the internet, but basically, and it's, well, by the way, it's a mystical Christian meditation. So it goes beyond just the Christian dogma, but it actually allows you to go within and find your own source within. So, but you use a word to come back to center and you, you feel the word in your being or in your heart. I usually put the word in my heart and I just repeat the word. You repeat the word over and over. About 20 minutes is the recommended time to do contemplative prayer. And um, it helps you become very centered. It's also healing. And they suggest doing it twice a day. First time in the morning is more just to center yourself. The evening or maybe a five o'clock time would be to uh, for healing. So the first one is for centering. The second time of the day is for healing past traumas or past whatever. So anyway, when we were doing this last week and we used the word peace and you can use whatever word you wish. And I've got Isabella, no honey bun. She wants to get on my lap. Uh, we use a one word during the meditation. You come back to the word to keep you focused so that your brain doesn't um, get in the way as little as possible. It's impossible to totally have your brain not do anything, but it does keep your brain occupied. So we were using the word peace, and I had people tell me afterwards that um, they had dreams. They one person told me that she was she saw herself traveling across the world, sending healing. Another person told me that her animals were coming near her during the meditation. I'm getting the chills just now. They're attracted to good energy, so. The animal, her, her pets were coming around her. And then even the next day when she did it again, the same thing happened. Um, I had somebody said that they saw the white doves when we were talking about Ukraine, sending healing across the world, the white doves coming for peace. Some people saw angels. Uh, one person saw the soldiers laying down their arms. So there was a lot of positive Plus, oh yeah, somebody else said they felt the heat rising from their tailbone up like they were, like they had really invigorated their senses. Maybe that kundalini energy, just the energy rising in themselves from doing the meditation we were in group. But of course, this can happen on your own too. So yes, there's really positive stuff with meditation. Highly recommend it. And, and I do sometimes put meditations on this channel and um, I hope you enjoy those at your leisure. Um, another question or another thought that came to my mind is, does energy healing work? And especially when we're in this community on Zoom, in chat the other day, and this has happened several times, not the only time. Someone said, she emailed me, she said, when we sent healing energy to the group for whoever needs it, and she had been in pain all day, she said her pain went away. What, isn't that beautiful? So it's just to know what we do here. The healing love we share does help. It works. Please continue sending your healing, light, love, whatever you want to call it, prayers to whoever you want to send it to, whether it's Ukraine, Russia, yourself, your family. It works. So don't stop. Don't stop. Even though you may not know how much it works, it continues to work. All right. Now, some funny, I guess this is some interesting stories from hospice over the weekend. Somewhat interesting, I'd say. But um, I just want you guys to realize that at times when we, and it just sort of reminds me of the people in Ukraine who cannot, who might be injured and they cannot, they're not functioning like they used to and they need help. And the same thing as we decline and almost all of us will need help at some point in our life. Um, and one of the gifts that we can give others is the gift of them giving to us. So like a last gift that we can give, especially as we're in the dying process, but it can be any time, is allowing somebody to care for you and to help you because 
the giving is an act of service. It helps raise us up spiritually. It, it helps us grow spiritually to give to others. Now, so one who's receiving is helping somebody else because it helps them to grow spiritually. Then the person who needs the help, who is in a crisis, whether a health crisis or whatever crisis it is, that's also a spiritual learning. Because to be in a new, to be in a situation of suffering in a certain way, if it is suffering, or even if it's not suffering, is as a learning in itself. And also you teach others also. And I believe that when we witness people who are suffering, we become more compassionate and also feel more blessed, more grateful for the little things that we have. That is so, I mean, you know, the gratitude list. So if, if, so it was all a circle, right? The ones who need it are giving a gift to the ones who are giving. And then the ones who need it are also giving to the gift, be giving a gift because we all can see the love and compassion that we can send and also feel grateful. That's a gift as well. So it's a, you know, I, I had a man over the weekend, um, 55 year old, young, young man, right? 55. He has prostate cancer and it had spread to his bone. He can't get out of bed now. And he has everything. His wife has to do everything for him. Um, and so he was crying because I, I cannot do anything. I was the one who would help people change a flat tire on the side of the road. And I can't do that anymore. So he was really feeling bad about himself. But I reminded him that he's giving a gift of someone else giving to him. And um, that I think that seemed to help the idea that uh, he's still giving, even though he doesn't, he can't give in the same way that he used to give. All right. So I want to tell you, moving on, tell you about a nurse assistant that I met. Uh, I was I was knocking on the door. Uh, to a, a woman's home. She, she has the, a disease of Parkinson's. She lives with her daughter-in-law and I mean her daughter and son-in-law. But I was met by the door first through the glass door by this four-legged boxer mix. And so I love dogs and the, this dog and I were, I was talking back and forth to the dog before the humans came uh, to let me in. And we had already, were talking to each other. We, and then as a human came and opened the door, we were already buddies. Now, as I, uh, we were going upstairs to see the patient. And uh, of course, and the dog's name was Millie. Millie led the way. And as I was sitting down to say hello and introduce myself to the patient, Millie came under my lap, under my knees. And she sat in between my legs and her head came up out of my knees. And like, I could almost visualize she had on a nursing outfit and nursing cap. I mean, she, she was like my little nurse assistant for that, that time. I, I know that she's a healer. And this reminds me, animals are healers. Animals are here to help us heal. I know you guys, a lot of you guys know this already, but I just want to remind you how much it's such a pleasure to work with a nurse assistant as a four-legged. And um, she also, she had two jobs in the family. She was, the, she was a nurse healer and she was also a guard at the door. So she had two roles. And plus, you know, she can speak two languages, human and dog language. And so very smart little uh, being. Um, but, but know that they are here for healing too. We all are in this together, raising each other up and helping each other in every which way that we can. And know again, our intentions matter. It doesn't matter how we're sending our prayers. Don't think of it as right and wrong. Just know it's the intention that matters. Okay, I think I just wanted to share that with you. Um, and I'll talk now a little bit. Oh, one more thing I have to say about my, my hospice day yesterday. 
Uh, there was a man I met, very agitated. Uh, and I hope that this, if this helps any of you guys, when you see agitation with somebody older, uh, especially if they're a little confused. Um, now this man was in a nursing home. He was so agitated. He tried, he went out in the, he somehow he got through the door. I don't know, it was locked, but he got through, went outside, was rolling on the grass, trying, yelling out, call the police. Um, they couldn't really, they were, he was kind of being a little bit physically aggressive. And that gets a little extreme here. But in general, when you see agitation with somebody who um, is older, maybe with dementia or just confused, the agitation can be related to pain. There's other things that can be related to as well. Of course, it could be low oxygen. It could be uh, bowels. It could be an infection. But I, I think of pain first because that's an easy fix. You can always try pain medicine and see if it, it helps. So I just want to point that out to you. And then when somebody keeps saying, I want to go home, I, I, get me out of here. I, oh gosh, you know how often I hear that. Get me out of here. I want to go home. I always assure them that they're going to be able to go home. The bus is coming and we'll be right on time for them. I just, just assure, go back to the assurance that they are going to be able to go home. I always assume that home is spirit world. Um, so just go, you know, just assure and assure and assure. Okay, so that's all for the hospice day. Now moving on to um, what Mary has for us today. Um, <clears throat> I'll read a few of my notes. <sighs> okay, she wants to remind us we have come together for a long, we have come a long way during this wartime. We don't see it but our lights have been more connected and, and a stronger force now that we are coming together in, in a prayerful union. And be at ease with yourself, at ease, because ease makes the transmission of the prayers easier. Don't struggle with sending the light. Be kind to yourself. It's all about your intention, just like I said. And there's no right or wrong way. Be yourself more at ease. And then the more, more energy will be sent. And it is through you that the, that it is through your soul, which is that which sends the healing energy. It's not your physical being. It's your soul. The connection to your heart, to your higher self, which is the all-powerful self. That's what sends the transmission of light. Okay, it's, so we're not sending it from our physical body. Otherwise, we would be exhausted. Okay, feel, first she's suggesting feel the pulsing, the pulsing of your energy in your own being. Feel your heart, feel your love, fill your heart first. Know you are connected and gracefully and then gently send it on. It will go exactly to where it needs to go. Um, know that the sending of the light is deeply healing. And it's for you and the consciousness of all others. Also, she recommended, send to the crystalline grid of the earth. The crystalline grid is what holds the memories of the tragedies, of the grief, and allow the energy to shift the crystalline grid energy. Allow your sending to the crystalline grid, allow that to uplift the earth's energy. We may feel souls are lost, but it is really an energetic pattern that gets stuck to the crystalline grid. In other words, we may know, we may think that it's a, a, a soul that hasn't passed on, but in reality, it's the energy of the grid that's holding that pattern of the soul or that pattern of whatever the soul is experiencing. 
That's what we're feeling more than a soul that hasn't crossed over. And send energy to the crystal through the earth and the earth to our, our earth mother. The animals are very connected and feel the crystalline grid and even more so than humans. And send healing, abundance, and safety and reassurance to the animals as well. It is coming. The light is coming and it is exciting. It felt very exciting. Thank you, Mother Mary. It felt very exciting talking to her. I felt like she was bringing lots of light, showing me lots of light is coming. So it's hard to believe. Keep your eye on the light. Keep your eye on the ball. Let it come. And I want to remind you when we um, are feeling like, let's say you're connecting to you know, a, a Maripol or where the city that is, that city will need a lot of healing. Uh, the one that has, um, you, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> Remember the city is holding the energy and it may feel like lost souls, but it's really just holding the energy. So same thing when we are crossing an area Let's say somebody died at the street corner and we drive by and we feel like that soul's still there. The soul's not still there. It's just the energetic pattern of what happened is still there. So you can help clear that energetic pattern. Crystals hold energy and feelings and emotion, or, you know, memories. Crystals hold memories. Our earth mother has a crystalline grid that holds memories. So, um, our earth is in need of a lot of healing as well as the people. So please continue. And I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but it is so important that know your work is being, is well received. Know you are making a difference. And um, thank you all so much for being here. Much love and joy. And if you like this video and you want to know more about energy medicine or meditation or mediumship or healing, like and subscribe, share this, share if you feel so inclined. And I would love to have you join along. So many, many blessings and be well. Bye.